Hello, how are you? Welcome to Bromtech Engineering. My name is Injun Nsongo and today I will take you through rules of overlapping in RCC beams. We have already done rules of overlapping in RCC columns. So please, if you want to check that and study it, you can check in our videos. Therefore, uh, in RCC beams, we don't just carry out lapping. We already talked about why we need lapping. And today we're just going to look at the rules that we need to consider whenever we are lapping RCC beams and columns and, and, and slabs, sorry. The first rule is that the lapping zone of the top bars should always be at the L over 3 midsection of our beam. So if we divide our beam into three parts on the top section, lapping should always be at the mid region. Since this region has low negative moments, therefore a minimum chance of failure in case of an eventuality. Secondly, lapping uh, of zone of the bottom bars should be at the columns up to a distance of L over 8 from the supports. The reason for this is that we have less positive moments within these regions. Therefore, there is a minimum chance of failure. Different codes dictate different uh, lapping sections. Uh, for instance, and some codes dictate L over 8 and others dictate L over 4. But whenever you are lapping and bars are congested within a section of L over 4, you are uh, of, of L over 8, you are allowed to extend your lapping up to a region of L over 4. Uh, but if the bars are not congested, you can consider having them within L over 8. That is why we have mentioned that it should be up to a distance of L over 8, but if the bars are congested and uh, we need to have space for our concrete, therefore we can extend the lapping zone to L over 4. Therefore, our bottom bars ought to be lapped uh, the region around our supports. Thirdly, uh, not more than 50% of both top and bottom bars are supposed to be lapped in the same zone of any clear span. If this was our top view of our top bars, they are supposed to be lapped at different sections. So, and this is called alternate lapping as observed also in the bottom bars. Therefore, we're not supposed to lap them at the same region so that we avoid having an area of weakness in, in our beam, one region of weakness in our beam. Uh, fourth is that whenever we are considering grade 30 of concrete and grade 460 type 2 of steel, the lapping length is supposed to be 40 multiplied by the diameter for compression lap length and for tension lap length. This is according to British Standard 8110, the 1997 version, and the table to consider this from is table 3.27. Also, if we look at the Indian Standard, we need 30D in order to have flexural tension lap length. It is expedient to read different codes to determine, uh, to, to be able to have the know-how of how they determine their parameters. And we also have some important details to consider, including lapping in, in slabs. And the first one includes that bars above 36 millimeters are not supposed to be lapped at all. Instead, they are normally supposed to be welded. This is because these bars, are, if uh, lapped, they are not able to transfer stresses from one bar to another efficiently. Secondly, lapping is always not provided in regions with high shear force. Therefore, please uh, determine your region, whether it has high shear force, and this region should not have uh, lapping of your bars. For instance, if we are doing a raft or, or ground beams and we have high punching shear of a column, we are not supposed to lap our bars in these zones. Uh, thirdly, the lap length normally depends on uh, majorly three things. The first is the grade of concrete, secondly is the grade of steel, and third is the diameter of the bars. Therefore, if you want to determine this from the Eurocode, British Standard, Indian Standard, or the American Standard, these are the main three parameters to consider. Generally, for tension, we need a 30D or L over D, whichever is greater. L over D is the development length as highlighted in the design codes. And generally, L over D can be taken as 40D, but 
it also need to be determined as shown in the code. If you do not understand what development length is, please check out in our videos. We have done a video on development length and how to determine it. Therefore, flexural tension lap length is normally you consider whichever is greater between development length or 30D. And D is the diameter of your bar. For direct tension lap length, we normally look at 2 L over D or 30D, whichever is greater. As we mentioned earlier, develop L over LD is development length. And this one uh, will be able to give us direct tension lap length. And as we mentioned earlier, if we are dealing with class 30 of concrete and for 60 type 2 of steel, then we need 30D for direct tension lap length according to the Indian standard. Uh, also, we have in compression zones, uh, the lap length must always be greater than 24D. And this is majorly in columns. You are not supposed to have a lap length of less than 24D. Your lap length is supposed to be greater than that. For slabs, slabs actually are a series of beams and majorly slabs are lapped the same way beams are lapped. And for one-way slabs, lapping is normally provided uh, at points of contravection. These are points where we have least bending moments. And the bottom reinforcement are provided at a distance L over 3 from the supports. And a lapping distance determination is always similar to that of beams. And also, for top bars, lapping is not required since they are generally short. And in case lapping is done, it should not exceed uh, a third of all the bars provided. For a two-way spanning slab, lapping is done at points of least bending moments. This can be determined the same way it is in beams. And if an end-to-end -end distance between laps is the least, then the lap should be provided in a staggering manner, as we have already explained earlier. Therefore, that is all for today. Thank you for learning with us. Drop any questions or concerns or what you think about this in our comment section and we will continue studying together. Therefore, welcome and hope to see you another time. Please subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon and may the good Lord bless and keep you.